I'm a young professional who lives in Copenhagen, and I'm here to tell you about how life is like over here. In my previous video about this city, I talked about the Danes, the language, housing, and general life over here. So if you haven't seen it yet, maybe check that out later. But in this video, I will talk about what it's like to work and be a parent in this great city. And I will give you a few app recommendations too that will make your life easier over here. Please do think about subscribing to the channel or even just liking this video because that makes me very happy. Okay, let's dive into this. Work. Is it possible to get work in Copenhagen without speaking Danish? Absolutely. After I moved here, my approach was to focus on finishing my education, get good at my craft, so that the lack of Danish would not matter and try to find a job that way. It worked out so far. And I do believe I also got lucky. But if you're really good at something, it doesn't really matter if you can't say cream buns in Danish, because who would care really? So maybe if you get real good at what you're doing first, then the language can be secondary to that. At least that was my way to approach this. Still, I would argue that it helps if you speak some Danish, you know, just to try to integrate better and mingle with your coworkers. Well, during my studies, I worked at a cafe, then for a short stint at a bakery as well. Sure, I served some customers at the cafe who didn't speak English, but we made it work, and I only had one uncomfortable encounter where someone got a bit angry about me not speaking Danish. There is no tipping culture over here, but the pay was pretty alright for the student job, and I was working at a place with some real nice people that made things fun. But luckily, soon enough, I was able to move into student jobs related to my field of education, which was design. I worked at several software companies, small ones, startups, and have been doing freelance as well. And now that I've graduated, I work full-time at a mid-sized Danish software company as a designer. Our official language is English. This means all internal communication, meetings, and even the notes for the dishwasher are all in English. My team has actually more internationals than Danes right now, and my VP and our CEO happen to be non-Danish as well. Obviously, this is not the case everywhere, but this is how it is for me right now. At my company, the general vibe is fairly relaxed. We create software for the creative industry, so it's not banking and light blue shirts. And from my years of experience in being in offices in two major cities in Denmark, this relaxed atmosphere is kind of the norm. The CEO doesn't have their own office. They also have to put away their own dirty dishes into the dishwasher, just like I do. And I get to be cordial and chatty with my VP whenever we have the time. Lunch is an important social event. We go down to the canteen and share a meal together. You get to see other people from your different teams or have lunch with someone from the leadership team. Now, saying this out loud actually sounds so cheesy and ridiculous because this is such a normal daily thing, but I know that this is not the norm in many different countries. Denmark has a work culture where you are encouraged to challenge your coworkers as well as your superiors on a daily basis. Most places that I worked at were operating with a very flat structure that promotes more fluid communication and collaboration. Having direct access to people within the leadership team is super healthy for the culture of a company, and I love this. But I am coming from a very different background, so I think this is something that I'm still adjusting to and trying to take more advantage of. If you're moving here without a job, a contract, or a rich auntie, then you should know that LinkedIn and networking are super important here. So get on the platform, start following companies and people, and put yourself out there. A lot of jobs are filled by people introducing their friends to their companies, so it is super crucial for a newcomer to try to tap into this. Another thing is that a healthy work-life balance is something that Danes are very proud of and are sticking to. Now, this doesn't mean that there is no overtime or the occasional crazy period, but as a parent of a young child with no family here, this is something that is extremely crucial for me. As long as I complete my required tasks for the day, I have the flexibility to start later or finish earlier when needed. I can attend to personal appointments and being able to care for my child is super reassuring and I am very happy that my manager and the company is in on this as well. And as a bonus, at my company, I was lucky enough to come across the most ridiculous finger food display I have ever seen. I mean, look at this thing. Look at it. Okay, let's move on to the next topic, being a parent. So yeah, I'm a parent, and while I'm still figuring things out, I think that Denmark is a fantastic place for having a child. This could be a super long video, but I will try to keep it high level and focus on kids around one to two years old. But before we get down to it, a funny thing that I noticed was that Danish parents don't really swear in front of their kids. Well, not in Danish, but hearing the F-bomb dropped in front of a two-year-old 
is a very different story and happens quite often. But I'm actually a big fan of the Danish way of parenting, which to me seems like a very nice balance of being there for your child, but also letting them experience the world and letting them make their own mistakes. Now, I have a super young kid, so right now the mistake I'm talking about is not so much me letting them spend all their money on NFTs, but more like letting them walk into the door so the next time they know not to do it. Obviously, not everyone is parenting the same way, but there are no helicopter parents here in Denmark because they are called curling parents instead. These are the parents that try to sweep away all obstacles in their kid's path so that their child can go through life without the slightest bump. There has been a lot of discussion about this recently, but as I said, I like the way of letting my kid make age-appropriate choices, so I try to stay away from the broom. A lot of the Danish parents give their kids freedom and expand independence from them. For example, putting away their clothes from a very young age. And I think that works out great. Also, being a parent here is not just a mom's responsibility, and I love this. You'll see plenty of fathers going around with the prams. There are actual father playgroups for the new dads. And this is such a common thing over here that yet again, I feel weird talking about this. It's just completely normal that most fathers are super hands-on. My kid goes to a daycare, which is called the Vugestuja, and loves it. These institutions are not mandatory, therefore they are not free either, so we pay around 260 euros a month for it. The cost depends on your household income, actually. This includes five days of care, food, diapers, and all the toys and craft materials that they play with. The daycare is in the same building as a kindergarten, which is called a Bernehaun. And these places together are called an integrated institution, meaning when my kid turns three, they move up to the kinder. I like this system very much because already the younger kids do socialize with the older ones regularly, so that means that they also know the teachers and care staff as well by the time they move up. I've mentioned this idea of letting the kids experience the world themselves earlier, and this also goes for the daycare. So the kids get a lot of freedom and are taught to be independent. They are free to explore around their rooms and the backyard, they climb onto things without the staff always telling them not to. And often, my spawn comes home with a concoction of snot, dirt, lunch, paint and other things on their face. But most importantly, they also have the biggest smile on as well. In the beginning, this was difficult to adjust to for my partner and me, as where we come from, this is not the norm. But now we can see the benefits of it and happy to see our kid having the freedom to do new things. But sugar is not allowed in our daycare. So whenever a child is having their birthday, they usually bring some fresh fruit or some dried fruit snacks to share with the others. This also works out great. As I mentioned in the previous video, I live in the suburbs of Copenhagen. But even here, you see a good mix of teachers and kids coming from different backgrounds, and I am very happy about this. Another good thing is that you will see a lot of daycare teachers who are men. I think this is super important for the kids, and I was very positively surprised about this when we moved here. Most daycares also have an app on which you can get updates about your kid, how much they nap, and the possibility to able to message the teachers and so forth. It is super handy, and especially during the pandemic, it was a crucial tool to keep in touch with the stuff. If you want your kid to go to a daycare, then it is important to sign them up right around when they turn four months old. A lot of daycares and kindergartens have a crazy long waiting list, so it is better to sign up sooner than later. Otherwise, you might have to end up in emergency care for your kid in a random daycare, but still within your area. Contrary to popular belief, your kid doesn't automatically get Danish citizenship just because they were born here. But oddly enough, you need to get a birth certificate from your local church, which seems to be a very old tradition that has just continued on. They do get the yellow card, so all the public services are covered for them, such as uh, doctor and dentist visits, and other bureaucratic things that an infant has to take care of. Also. Danish kids spend a considerable amount of time outdoors. The website Your Danish Life has a pretty cool guide for new parents on how to dress their kids for this climate, so I will leave a link in the description below. Outdoor playgrounds in Copenhagen are generally very well maintained, clean, and there are many different toys to play with. But due to the cold and rainy weather from, well, for kind of half the year, you also need to think of indoor things to do. Last winter, we couldn't make use of a lot of the indoor play areas because of the pandemic thing, but now in autumn 2021, Denmark is completely open and there are no more restrictions whatsoever. So I'm hoping for a more action-packed winter for our kid. There are private indoor playhouses, but the different city districts also offer free public places for kids to play at. And a lot of the libraries have kids areas that you can visit for free. So there are options there to hide from the bad weather. 
During my studies while I worked at the cafe, I had a few workmates who were between 15 to 17 year old. And while I know that those people went through an interview process to be able to work there, but they were just so awesome. Smart, independent, responsible, and super interested in the world around them. I know that my child is quite a few years away from that age, but if they can turn out to be a young person like that, with our parenting and the help of the Danish education system, I will be a very happy and proud father. Useful apps. Okay, for the last part of this video, let's assume that you moved here successfully, you got your yellow card, a place to stay, and the Danish bank account. Here are some apps specific to Denmark that I use almost daily. Spia. This is an app that gives you a super simple overview of your finances and spendings. It connects to your bank account and you can keep track very easily of what is happening with your money each month. This is a free app, meaning that you pay for it with your data, but there is a trade-off that I'm happy to make to have this great overview of the sad state of my bank account. Share now. I love biking in Copenhagen, but sometimes I really need to use a car, and renting is quite inconvenient and expensive. Instead, I use ShareNow, which is a car sharing app. It is super simple to get verified, and there are plenty of cars parked around Copenhagen with varying sizes. I wouldn't call this service cheap, but at the lowest possible price of 2.5 crowns per minute, the convenience of it is really where I get the value from. DBA. This is the Gumtree or Craigslist of Denmark, an online marketplace and for secondhand stuff and services. There is not so much to say about it, really. Another good option for it is uh, Facebook Marketplace, which became very popular here as well. Reshopper. This is also a secondhand marketplace, but it is specifically for kids, clothes and toys. We use this app fairly often for buying things. I never really had a bad experience with it, so I could easily recommend it. Mobile Pay. Denmark is pretty much cashless. I honestly don't remember the last time I used actual money, and when I don't pay with a card, I use mobile pay. It is the Venmo of Denmark, and everybody has it. NemID app. NemID is a digital signature system that you use to sign into your banking or to your doctor and those kind of things. For a long time, I didn't realize that there was an actual app for this and was using my plastic card like my grandma, if she was Danish. Google Translate app. I guess I don't have to say much about this, aside from that it works pretty well with the Danish language and that I rely on this a lot. And that is it. If you missed the previous video about the Danes, housing and general life in Copenhagen, I will leave that here for you somewhere. I hope that this video gave you a bit of an insight of what's it like working and being a parent here in Copenhagen. This city is an amazing place to live, work and raise a kid in. And we also have a lot of fantastic vegan and vegetarian food around that I just cannot recommend you enough. If you have any more questions, please feel free to leave a comment and maybe subscribe or like this video if it helped you out with some of these tips. Thanks, bye. Oh, man, it's so hard to say, please, 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 please. Please, it's not even late. It's actually, it's not even late, it's the beginning of the day.